Welcome back, fight fans. We're here for another episode of Shooting the Shit Podcast here on Combat Press and everywhere else this show simulcasts. As usual, I am your host, Riley Kontek, and another week, another UFC veteran we have on the show. Um, he fights in the heavyweight division, um, and he will be fighting uh, next month for Fury FC. Uh, he is Juan Adams. Juan, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, bro. Just got off work, got another workout out of the way, so I'm feeling good, you know? Awesome, awesome. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. So we got a couple topics we'll touch on today. Uh, you know, the first thing that we wanted to bring up was uh, you... Uh, uh, as as happens with the Twitter sphere, uh, you uh, he would put a tweet up yesterday that uh, I think we were gonna allow you to explain yourself on because for some reason a bunch of people got butt hurt about it. Um, but I'll actually read you the tweet and you can explain what you meant by that, and then maybe this will shut everybody up. So uh, the tweet in question, uh, I'll quote you here: You have MMA in your bio username and you have no fights. That's cute. Remember, there are those who talk about things and those who do things others talk about. I might not have achieved what I wanted to in the UFC, but I was still there and can still go back. Have, can you? Now, obviously, there were um, follow-up tweets to this where you, I think, tried to explain yourself, but uh, what were what were you trying to get at there, and, and what was the meaning behind those? Right, so, um, as you know, there's only 250 characters in the tweet. Um, as an educated guy, I typically try to, you know, keep it as short and succinct as I can. Um, the tweet was, wasn't was about MMA fans or MMA media. It's about those guys that want to comment on my fights that claim they train MMA or have some combat sports background and haven't accomplished or even attempted to accomplish a fraction of the things that I have in the combat sports world. Like, I have over 100 Division One wrestling matches. Um, been wrestling since I was 14. Started fighting, uh, and you know, I started fighting. My first amateur fight was September of 2016. My UFC, my UFC debut was December of 2018. Like, that's what that was. Like, I, it's not that I dislike fans. It's simply that there's a clear disconnect between most people's combat effectiveness and what they can actually do. And a lot of these people on there on here saying like, oh, I could take you or I could have performed better than that. If you really feel that way, come train with me. It's public knowledge. Like, it's public knowledge what I do and you know, where I train, all that stuff. And the that's the other aspect of it that a lot of people fail to recognize or fail to realize is that, you know, my failures or my shortcomings are very public now at this point. And all of my highest highs and lowest lows are broadcast for everyone to see. Whereas you get to go and and have your take your L's in private, as um, as they like to say. You get to take your L's and decide what it is people know and and get to comment on. And I don't have that luxury. So as far as I'm concerned, like you shut the hell up, you know, and, and just sit there and enjoy because again. I do this, I got to a point where I, it was my sole source of income, and you will never reach that point. And that's all that was. It, you know, for MMA fans, MMA media, I, I, I completely understand that, you know, yeah, I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for the fans doing that, right? I also understand that MMA media needs to get through their heads, they wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for us. They'd be providing commentary on something that they enjoy far less, according to them. That's not according to, according to them, right? And so you get to that point where it's like, well, just shut up and, and let people be. Like, I don't go to you when you fail or blow your promotion interview at work. I don't do that. Um, so I'm just out here doing my thing and other people saying I wouldn't have a job if it weren't for that like first off like I have a degree in computer science I could easily make more money doing something else I choose not to because I found a different calling in life and so it, it, it was just along those lines a little bit of frustration and I didn't even I stopped responding because it got way more replies than I was expecting um but it wasn't against like MMA media. I have a lot of friends in MMA media. A lot of 
fans that had become friends to me. And that's all that was about. So that that's the only clarification it was there. And it's one of those things like, yeah, okay, I might not have reached everything I wanted to in the UFC. I can still get back there. Most of the people commenting will never get to that point. Like, I reached the top 1% of the MMA world. I reached the top 1% in wrestling. I was an NCAA Division I top 30 ranked wrestler. Like, it's another thing you can't do. I graduated college. That's another thing a lot of people don't do. I got a degree in computer science, which is still something outside the scope of most of these people's abil abilities. So it, it, I'm just sitting here like, what? why do I ever need to be bothered by that? And it wasn't from a place of me being butthurt or anything. It was just an observation. But because I have that little check mark or because I have a certain amount of followers, more people see it. And it's a, and it's a, it's a, it was just another reminder for me that, Okay, yeah, I should probably be more careful about the things I do and say, but at the same time, I'm going to unapologetically be myself. And that was me in that tweet. Yeah, I don't think there was anything wrong with what you tweeted. I think anybody who got offended by it uh, mistook it or they're just sensitive in the first place. Um, I, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it, and I honestly agree with most of what you said. And I kind of figured it was more uh, targeted towards maybe the trolls that, that sit online uh, as opposed to people who actually are studious of the sport and want to have a uh, educated comment on it. So uh, I think that's a good explanation. I agree with you there. Now, uh, moving on to the second part here. So um, as we talked about before, you just came on the air here. Uh, you said that you're a teacher. So uh, what level uh, of school do you teach? What do you teach? And, and how does that uh, you know mix with your training? So um, I teach ninth grade biology. Uh, I'm not going to say too much where I teach at, um, but it's uh, it's for at-risk kids. It's a charter school for at-risk kids. And, you know, when I was in college, I did my summer internships with at-risk kids. I've worked with kids since I was a kid. Um, I've been coaching since I was 15. I've been uh, working with at-risk kids since I was 19. And before I started teaching, I was actually working as a be in behavioral therapy with um uh, with youth from troubled backgrounds and, and various uh, sources of trauma. So now um, that I'm a teacher, I have to be at the school at 7.30, I leave at 4.30. Uh, that obviously puts a little bit of um, restraint on my training time. So what I do now is I do my strength and conditioning at 6 a.m. I, I wake up at five, I get all my stuff ready for the day, make sure my lesson plans are good to go. I go, I do my workout. After that workout, I shower, go straight to the school. From the school, I usually do one or two workouts afterwards. Uh, finish up my lesson plans for the next day or get as far ahead as I can. And then I am try to be in bed by 9 o'clock. Um, and uh, that that's my schedule. On the weekends, um, on Fridays and Saturdays, I try to amp it up a bit since I don't have school those days. Right. So right now, it's, uh, it's all about weight management right now. And uh, that's pretty much the story of my career. <laughs> yeah, especially for a heavyweight, you know, you guys, uh, they, uh, there's no really weight class above that unless, you know, they make it an, an allotment for that. So I guess I can understand the weight management thing. So uh, very cool to know that you're a teacher. Uh, I, was, I was a former teacher myself. So, uh, you know, we got that in common there. So uh, now getting specifically to your fight career, uh, you know, your most recent fight, you fought a, a contender series veteran in Austin Lane. I believe he was a former uh, former professional football player as well. Uh, you know, unfortunately, obviously, you came out on the uh, the short end of the stick there. So uh, in looking back at that performance, you know, uh, what were some things that you could have done differently or what were some lessons you learned from that fight with Lane? You know, um, it was one of those things where I was constantly trying to conserve my energy throughout the fight. I never really went for the finish in the first, second, or third round. I was dominating that fight up, up until the last 10 seconds when I wasn't. Ultimately, um, I wasn't out. If you watch the fight, uh, there was a different canvas. It was like a vinyl type canvas. And, you know, he hit the hook. It was a good shot. It got me in the eye. There were a couple times I was poked in the eye. And um, so I went for the shot and I grabbed the leg. And 
as I was turning to switch to guard and try and work from there because he hadn't been able to hold me down previously, the ref said I was out and I wasn't. And, you know, it was one of those things where a lot of my fights, um, none of my fights that I feel I was out, I, I thought I was still fighting. I learned from the Greg Hardy fights that, you know, you have to transition from there. As I slipped, I probably stayed still longer than I should have. And that's what stopped it. But uh, moving forward now, it's just more of a focus on cardio. In that camp, I put a lot into my strength, and I was trying to be fast and explosive. And I guess that just didn't uh, come through to shine. But I believe I was up 30-27 across the scorecards on that one. So, again, only thing I could take away from is, all right, work on your cardio more and go for the finish uh, so you don't have to worry about your gas tank as you're moving forward into it. But it was a good learning experience, and, again, at the end of the day, that was a title defense fight, and I'm eight and four still, which is, you know, still exponentially better than a lot of people commenting on my failures. Well, not only that, but, you know, eight and four is a heavyweight, which, I mean, there's a lot of heavyweights, especially in the regionals, that have really, really garbage records or very padded records. And I and obviously we can't say that about you because you fought some very notable fighters. So uh, I will definitely agree with you there. Now, on to the next one, obviously, in February, you will be taking on actually a guy that I forgot. It was a, He is a UFC veteran. I forgot he was in the company for a few fights, Aaron Rosa for Fury FC. And I don't know why, but this podcast has really become the uh, Fury FC Fighter Podcast. We've had about five or six of you guys on here. So, uh, in taking a look at that upcoming fight, you know, just comment on Aaron Rosa as an opponent. Uh, and then what do you need to do to get him out of the cage with the victory? You know, I think I just keep doing what I've been doing. Um, it'll get there. Obviously, we're focusing a little bit more on the stand-up and a lot more on the cardio. So, at any point where I have a chance to finish, uh, I'm going to go for it. Aaron Rosa... Uh, He's a tough guy, but he's beatable. You know, uh, I look at him and it's the same as uh, I would look at an opponent that was coming to fight me, you know. There's a game plan in place to beat me. Um, I've been beaten before. I'm not this insurmountable task. And so I look at everyone, you know, we're all human at the end of the day. We all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. Uh, I'm not going to reveal my game plan too much, but I feel that, you know, I continue to do what I've been doing at the level of which I'm capable of. There's not very many people in the world that, that are going to be able to beat me, especially not in the three-round fight, you know. So uh, that, that's it. That's really all I see to it. Um, yeah, that's it, really. In terms of strengths, what do you see as Aaron's biggest strength in the cage? Striking, grappling? Um, I would say striking. Um you know, with me, I feel like I'm one of the best grapplers in the world, so there, I don't really feel anyone has an edge on me in that, that department. But striking-wise, um, something that I still struggle with uh, and, and having the confidence to really pursue it fully. So that's the only area I would say that he might have an advantage or, or cardio. But, I mean, the guy hasn't fought in seven years. I don't know why he chose me to be his, you know, coming out of retirement fight. But... All I can do is make him regret that decision. Um, and, you know, sometimes people fight for other reasons. Maybe he wants to see if he still got it. Um, and I'm a good test to, to see if he still do. Um, so, yeah, that, that's it. For sure. And actually, it's just funny you mentioned that because we just had Ben Pierre Saint on the podcast, uh, I believe, two weeks ago, and he just came off a five-year hiatus. And everyone's got their reasons, you know, some of it's personal reasons and some of it's just, yeah, they want to just hop back in the cage and see how they can do. So that'll be really interesting. So, again, that'll be Fury FC. I believe that'll be on UFC Fight Pass. And I don't believe it's the main event, but I think you're one of the top couple fights on that card, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I'm the second or third fight on the main card. So uh, I will be on UFC Fight Pass, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's funny because um, I have to go back to work the next day, so my flight out of San Antonio leaves at like 8.50 something that night. So I'm going to do my fight, maybe do a couple interviews, take a few photos, and then my stuff's going to be packed, and my coach is taking me back to the airport. 
Oh, that's like the definition of a red eye almost, but <laughs> perfect. All right, now we'll get to the last uh, segment of the show. Um, so this weekend, there will, there will not be a UFC event, but uh, we'll take a look at the next two main events. We got a fight night and then a, a pay-per-view. So the first one uh, we were talking about a little bit before we got on the air, you got UFC fight night. You got Sean Strickland, who is really, really starting to take center stage in terms of the uh, erratic personality, which is actually really funny in my opinion. Uh, but also he brings it in the cage and – you know, almost has a Diaz-like personality in the cage with the shit talking and the uh, the gesturing. Uh, taking on Jack Hermanson, who, as we mentioned, is a is a is a very solid grappler. Uh, so, Juan, taking a look at this fight, uh, break it down, and who do you like? Um, obviously, you know Strickland's got that no quit in him. He's very very flashy in the cage. He's uh, he's very aggressive, also, um, but it's calculated aggression. His striking is clearly cool. Uh, there's a new video service that uh, of him knocking out a training partner, I think. But he, he blends combos really well. It's uh, constant pressure, and he can always put you out. Hermanson um, has some really cool submissions. Um, he submitted some guys that you didn't think he was going to beat, and I feel like this is the type of fight where Hermanson really shines, you know. Um, so I'm going with him. I'm also a grappler, so... I'm going to go with the grappler on that one. I'll digress with you. I'm going to take Strickland here. I think his wrestling defense is strong enough where if Hermanson does try to get in and shoot on him, I think that he has enough wherewithal to uh, defend the takedown and then obviously use his superior striking because he does have superior striking here. Uh, so I think he does get the win. So uh, for that sake, we all have the opposite opinion. And then we'll move on to the UFC 271 main event. you got a rematch for the middleweight championship of the world. you got Izzy Adesanya taking on Robert Whitaker. Now, obviously, uh, it, 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 Izzy is the one who took the belt off Whitaker in their first fight. That was the the, the fight he won the championship in. Um, so, um, you know, and, and looking at this fight, do you see anything differently happening here? Do we see a Whitaker 2.0, or is this kind of is the same roadmap to what we saw in their first uh, fight? What we're going to see in the rematch? You know, um, if I was Izzy's camp, I wouldn't do anything different. I just think that Whitaker is going to come in a little bit more defensive and. It'll be more calculated. If Izzy wins, I don't see it being by knockout. But that being said, you know, he's really shown some growth since that fight. Uh, obviously, he lost to Blakovic, but, you know, you would think that Blakovic being having the height or having the size advantage would have been able to you know, utilize a little more against Izzy. And it really only shown through in the grappling and uh, the striking, you know, Izzy's definitely a super dangerous counter striker when it comes to that, but he's also very dangerous when he's being the aggressor. Um, I just don't think the gap will be as wide this time in the striking department with Whitaker. He's got a little bit more experience. Um, oh, you're good, man. Um, and I, I think that he's a little bit better of a grappler also. I think he's just a little bit better, well round, a little more well-rounded than uh, Adesanya is. That being said, you know, Adesanya is growing every fight. Um, that's really a toss-up. I want Whitaker to win that, so I'm going to go with Whitaker. Uh, I love Adesanya's personality, um, but with Rob, you know, you look at how much he's overcome, you know, with, with his injuries. Mm -hmm. Still be able to come back and still being able to continue, you know. He was at a point where you were a champion, you lost a championship fight, you've had every opportunity to, you know, hang it up but something in him wants to keep going. So uh, I can respect that, you know, it, it's very similar to my path and a much smaller degree for me, obviously. But I see, I see, I just see something uh, different in Whitaker this time around. He seems a little bit hungrier. His fights afterwards have been absolute clinics. So uh, I'm gonna go with Whitaker in that one. I think he's, he's a little bit bigger and stronger, a little bit physically uh, bigger than Adesanya is, but um, you know, Adesanya just got that wow factor, so it's this one is a toss-up for me, but uh, I'm going to go with Whitaker, um, and I'd like to see him, see that type of guy succeed again. Yeah, I, I said the same thing. I think this is a toss-up. I think this will be definitely closer than the first fight. Uh, I did take Whitaker in the upset as well. 
Um, I think that he, if he can util, utilize the um, the clinch better, uh, especially against the cage, and also at least try to engage in some in some wrestling, I think that because I mean he does have very good striking himself, but obviously Adesanya, especially with that pro kickboxing experience, it's 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 hard to match that with him. Um, but I, I think if he's able to have more of a grinding approach here, I think that Whitaker can certainly uh, wear down it, uh, Izzy on that. So I, I took Whitaker in the upset as well with not a ton of confidence either way uh, with either person winning. So I think it, that's how good of a matchup it is. It's, it's, that's hard to call. So, all right, Juan, well, that's the end of the show. But before we let you go, um, I'll give you a minute or so if you want to thank, shout out anybody uh, where we can find you on social media, whatever. You have a minute. The floor is yours. All right, uh, social media, it's chosen one 285 on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, big shout-outs to my sponsors this time around. Um, Team Turning Point jumped on as a new sponsor for my strength and conditioning. I uh, want to make sure I never gas out again, so we're with them. And um, Bill Chino Meals, actually, you know, meal prep service out here in Albuquerque. Uh, got released from the UFC. There wasn't any um, – before that, I had been going through trifecta the whole time. But finding someone out here that does just as good a job, tracks all my calories, does all that for me, um, that guy's amazing. And then uh, my other sponsor, we've got Fight Stars. Um, it's founded by Duwani Perry. Um, he's actually fighting on the card with me. with yeah. Craig sponsor me on that. But that was super dope. Um, I'm excited to see his return to the cage as well. And just very grateful uh, that he was able to sponsor me this time around. And then uh, MX2 Global, which is a personal security company founded by Mike Guyman, uh, the Joker. If you guys don't know who that is, but he got a lot of experience with, uh, I is think, World know? Series of Fighting, UFC, Bellator. I mean, yeah. yeah, he's done it all, man. And uh, he's kind of been a mentor to me as well. I'm really honored to call him a friend and mentor. So that one too, and then um, all of my local fighters, uh, local sponsors out here. Um, was it? We have Muhair Beldi Consulting Firm. Uh, it's a law firm out here in Albuquerque. Coach um, Hinomi was also out here in Albuquerque. Team Turner went also out here in Albuquerque. And you know that that's it really. Just grateful to have all these small businesses really stepping it up and able to help me out while they still can especially to have a platform like UFC Fight Pass. And then uh, last and late, last but certainly not least is uh, Fury Fighting itself. You know, they kind of picked me up at a point where I didn't really know where my career was going and they've given me the opportunity to fight as frequently as I want to. And as long as they can find opponents, you know, I'm going to keep riding with them. But I'm just grateful for everything and I'm in a really good place of gratitude for all these companies. Perfect. Well, thank you again for coming on. And since I know I, it looks like you're in the school, I will not do my normal sign off because that would involve bad language. So I'll just say continue watching the fights and continue watching the show, guys. Have a good night.